Hello. Welcome, my name's Emma. I'm gonna be your host for this training simulation. Just here to guide you through the session and answer any questions you may have. So we have about 25 minutes for you to complete this scenario and then reflect on that experience. Um, so in your course of study, there was some information about the class. Do you remember anything about the students? Um, yes, I do. I remember one of them has dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. yes. And they're uh, third graders. So, mm -hmm. yes, uh, Emily is the student with dyslexia. Um, and so, and that's, and they'll have name tags. So you'll be able to identify her. Um, but okay. so today you'll be teaching a geometry lesson on types of angles. And really your goal here is just to implement at least one accommodation designed to increase learning for students with dyslexia and then determine if that accommodation did help. All right, so okay. um, any questions about the scenario? Um, so they don't have any prior knowledge to the angles at all? No. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, that's all. all. Right. All right, uh, so before I bring in the students, do you have any accommodations in mind for this class? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. For um, the dyslexic student, I think I'm going to, like I know how um, the acute and obtuse angles can get kind of confusing. She could get them mixed up. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use like the word cute and acute, how you associate cute with something small. So I think that would help a lot. So some some sort of like mnemonics and things like that. Some uh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so uh, have you worked with immersion before? No, this is my first time. Okay, great. Welcome. Uh, so just a little bit about the program. Um, the students can all write and raise their hands, but there are some limitations to their program. For example, if you ask them to mimic the shapes of angles or something like that, they can't do specific gestures like that. And okay. they can also not speak in unison. They can only speak one at a time. So for example, if you ask them to repeat back vocabulary to you, it's probably best to ask them individually to do that. Um, but other than that, feel free to treat them like you would any live student. And if you feel stuck or if you have a question at any time, you can just say pause out loud and I'll come back and I'll clear up any questions that I can. And then you can pick right back up where you left off in the scenario. All right. Um, any questions on the program? Um, I was watching some examples on YouTube and I saw how they let the students pair up. But you said they can only speak one at a time, so I wouldn't be able to let them pair up. They can pair up, yes. They can speak with okay, each other okay. simultaneously, but if you ask them to speak to you in unison, they cannot do that. Okay, got it. Got it. Great. All right. Um, so when you see the students appear on the screen, you can take a minute, uh, get used to the environment, build a little rapport with the students, feel no need to go right into teaching. And then you'll have about 20 minutes to teach your lesson. And then whenever you feel like your lesson is complete, you can excuse them to recess. You do not need to take up the full 20 minutes just when you feel like you've achieved the goal. Um, but if I do ha happen to interrupt you mid-lesson, it's not a reflection of your performance. It's just so we have time to debrief at the end. All okay. Right. Any final questions? No, ma'am. Thank you. All right. You'll see the students in just a moment. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Good. That's good. So today we're gonna to be learning about angles. Now, I know a lot of you may not know, but if you do, can you raise your hand and tell me if you know anything about angles or what you think we're gonna be learning about today? Yes, Carlos? Um. So an angle is like, isn't that when like two, things like come together um and they make like a corner yes that's right um and that corner is called a vertex so i'm gonna draw a right angle for you guys real quick and a right angle is almost like an l shape now you don't have to do it now you can practice later 
but when you see a right angle, it always looks like an L. And what Carlos was talking about, right here where the points meet, you can fit another L. So you can only fit an L inside of an L. And that's how you know if it's a right angle or not. Now we have a lot of everyday things that we see that have right angles. Um, but before we get to that, can anyone think of a shape that may have a right angle in it? Jayla, yes. Um, like a square? A square, yes. A square does have right angles in it. And if we look, here's our square. And we know that they're right angles because we can fit L's in every single corner. Isn't that right? L like Jayla. Oh, yeah. Just like the letter in your name. All right. So now that we have our L shape, we know it's an L shape. We know the shape that has all the right angles. Can anyone think of some everyday examples that we see that have right angles? How about, oh, yes, Mina? Um, well, the, so the windows are kind of squares? Yes, you, your windows can be square. And guess what? When you draw a house on here, I'm going to draw the windows for you. But when you start drawing a house, that also has some right angles on there, the corners of your house. But here's what Mina was talking about. If you draw some windows, I know I'm not the best artist, but here's some right angles in the squares for your windows. And also, when you look at your house, you have a door, and a door also has some right angles on it. Right, guys? All right. How about your TV? Anyone have a TV? Yeah. And also, uh, right. does the iPad have uh, four uh, right angles? Yes, your iPad can have four right angles. And there's the TV, which also has four right angles. So is everyone understanding what a right angle is? Any questions so far? Okay. And always remember that a right angle wherever the points meet, that it's 90 degrees. It's always going to be 90 degrees for a right angle. That's hot. All right. It is 90 yeah. degrees? Well, that's the temperature, but um, there's also another type of degree which can be used in measurement, which is what the, the type of degree that we're talking about today. All right, so let's move on to the next type of angle which is called acute angles. <clears throat> now. Acute? Wait, what? Did they name something in math acute? No, it, it does. Here, let me draw you an acute angle real quick. Now, doesn't that angle look a little small to you? So can anyone tell me the word in acute that you would say when you see something small. Can anyone raise your hand and tell me? Jayla, yes. Yeah, you say it's cute. Cute, yeah. So that's how you can remember. Uh, an acute angle is always less than 90 degrees. So that means it's going to be pretty small. So when you see a small angle like this, you're going to say, oh, that's so cute. So it must be an acute angle, right? Acute Will, angle. Will, how are you feeling? So Do you, are you understanding? What? Will? Huh? Will, do you have any questions? Are you understanding? You're pretty quiet today. Um, yeah, I get it. I just, like, don't really like cute stuff. Oh, you don't really like cute stuff? Well, that's okay. As long as you know what an acute angle is. Um, All right. So, a small one. Yeah, it is a small one. Good job. So, does anyone have any examples of where you might see an acute angle? Well, first of all, um, what shape 
would have that type of angle in it. What do you think? Mm. Carlos? Mm, well, maybe if you um, if you put another line to connect it, it would be like a triangle. That is correct. A triangle does have acute angles in it. Look at that, guys. All right, so any examples of where you might find some acute angles that look like that? Or that right here? Hmm. Um, does, the, does the Y in JLo, like on my name tag, that's, that's an acute angle? Yes, it, it does have an acute angle. Right there. The Y in JLo. Good job, Jayla. And how many of you guys, do you guys like pizza? Oh, I love pizza. Pizza's yeah. Well, oh, yeah, I like pizza, too. Well, how about this? Look at that. We have a slice of pizza, and that makes an acute angle. All right. And um, also... Who likes watermelon? Um, I really like watermelon. You do? All right. Well, next time you cut a slice of watermelon, that also makes an acute angle. So, um, like anything that's like a slice, anything that's like a slice is like an is acute angle? Well, not always just a slice because some slices can be in squares. And those can make right angles. But anything that's a slice that makes a small little point at the end, that can be an acute angle. Yes. And you can also, here, I have another example. I have a fan right here. And if you open it just a little bit, that's an acute angle. And if you open it all the way right here, can we tell that's a right angle? Because it's an L shape. All right, so does anyone have any questions about acute angles before we move to the next angle? Uh, how many degrees is it? It is any, it's less than 90 degrees. So that means it would be smaller, smaller than 90. Because 90 would be your, your median. That's where you would start out at, which is your right angle. So if it's less than 90, it'd be your acute angle. And then, if it's more than 90, it's going to be called an obtuse angle. Now, when you say that word, you, you can say it with a lot of pronunciation to make it seem big, obtuse, you know? Obtuse. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a good way to remember it. And an obtuse angle is anything over 90 degrees but less than 180. Now the angles that are more than 180 degrees are angles that we're going to learn later on okay but for right now all you need to know is that an obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. So let me draw an example. All right so here we have the right angle which is the L shape. Here we have the acute angle, which is really small. And uh, here, you have a question? No, I just like saying acute. Uh, oh, yeah. And here we have the obtuse angle. Doesn't that look big, guys? Obtuse. Yeah. So I have an example right here. Have you ever looked at a clock and think, I wonder what time it is. Well, if it looks like that, we have our straight line and then it goes outwards. That is an obtuse angle. What angle is this? Let's see, I haven't heard from Mina in a while. Mina, can you tell me what angle that is? Um, uh, if it's like, it's like a square, so it's, so it's a right angle. 
Good job, good job. And Will, can you tell me what type of angle that is? Um, that's, uh, that's like the one jail. It's an uh, acute angle. Yes, good job, guys. I'm very proud of you. You're catching on. So if we take one of our math books and we open it all the way out here, Emily, what do you think the type of angle that is? If it's big, uh -huh. um, a, a, a puce angle. Good job. It is an obtuse angle. You guys are doing so great. All right. So now that we have all of our angles in mind and we're all on the same page, I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to write some examples on the board and I'm going to give you guys um, a little pop quiz. And then after we're done with our little recap, I'm going to give you guys um, some homework to do. Does that sound good? I don't really like homework. Well, actually, um, it's it's pretty fun. It, it, it involves you going outside and looking around and, you know, taking pictures or writing down stuff. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second, okay? All right, so right now we're going to do our pop quiz. Now, I know... Pop quizzes aren't that fun, but it's just to let me know where you guys stand with the knowledge of angles, okay? So our first question is going to be, which angle is always 90 degrees? Which angle? Can anyone raise their hand and tell me? Carlos, yes. Um, it's, uh... It's the, uh, the right angle. Yes, good job. It's always the right angle. And that's what that looks like right there. Good job, Carlos. All right, next. Which angle? I'm going to draw something. No, that's fine. Now, which angle is that? What would you call that angle right there? Anyone raise their hand and tell me? Oh, I know that one. Jayla, I know uh, you know that one. That's, that's a pizza angle. That's a cute angle. Yeah, because it's so small and cute. All right, and last one. How about Will? Can you tell me what angle that is? Um, it's like... I forgot the word, um, but it's like the big one. Um, okay. It is the big one. That one's called obtuse. And let me tell you. Um, obtuse. Yes. Another way to remember the word obtuse. All right. So I'm going to draw it. I'm going to write it. Sorry. And you know how we remembered the word acute with the word cute in it? Well, the word obtuse... I know how you can say it, you know, and be like obtuse, but obtuse has the letter B in it. Now, the letter, I mean, the word big also starts with a B, right? So when you're thinking of an obtuse and a big angle, always remember B and B, okay? Um, obtuse. Does that help, do you think? Yeah, I think I get it. Okay. All right. So does anyone have any more questions about our angles before I assign homework for tonight, which I promise it's going to be fun? Any questions? Emily, you have a question? Um, no, I, um, I don't know if I can do the homework. Okay, why do you why do you think that? Are you afraid uh, that you're not? I what is it? I don't get it. Okay, can you tell me what you're not understanding, and I'll try to help um, you. What, so, um, like, what's when it's a when it's uh when it's a two single? When, you don't know what? How many? How many is it? How many, it's like 90 for right. How many is it for a 
obtuse? Obtuse is, since it's big, it's going to be more than 90, more than 90 degrees. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah, but it's going to be less than 180 degrees, which is another type of angle that we're going to learn later down the road. So you don't have to worry about that, okay? But yeah, so a right is 90, and then less is small, so that's a cute, because it's so cute and small. And if it's above 90, it's up twos, because it's big, okay? Um, twos. Right. So you feel a little bit better now? Um, yeah, I, I think, okay, yeah. Okay, well, good. All right, does anyone have any more questions before I give you homework? No? All right. So for your homework, you're going to, when you get home, I want you to, if you have an iPad or a phone, or even if you want to write it down on a notebook, if you don't have that, I want you to find two examples in your house, in your neighborhood, or anywhere you go, two examples of a right angle, two examples of an acute angle, and two examples of an obtuse angle. Okay, just find two of each and then bring it in class tomorrow and, you know, show me your pictures, show me your um, notebooks, and we'll discuss it from there. Okay, guys, does that sound good? All right, you guys seem to get it all pretty good, so I'm going to dismiss you and hope you guys have a good day, okay? Welcome back. Hello. All right. Seems like you were able to complete that full lesson. Uh, so let's just chat about that experience. So first of all, uh, how are you feeling about the about the practice? Any initial thoughts? Um, I feel great, honestly. That was a lot smoother than I anticipated, just because I was really nervous at first. Okay. But yeah, I think I think I did pretty good. Feel I feel confident. Great. Oh, great. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad you feel that way. Awesome. So uh, really, the, the official goal here was just to implement at least one accommodation designed to increase learning for students with dyslexia and determine if that accommodation did help. Um, do you feel like you were able to achieve that? I think so. Um, I did the, the word Q. And then later on, there was some confusion with the obtuse angle. So I tried to um, associate the, the letter B and the word big and then Emily got confused at the end and I, you know, recapped on that. And I think she finally got a got a grab on it. So I, I think I think they all feel pretty good about it. Okay, great. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh how did you determine that Emily was learning versus not learning? Um, when she okay, when I figured she was not learning was when she said how many degrees is the obtuse? Uh, and she's like, I don't get it. I think she wasn't fully, you know, grasping it because she wasn't as confident. Mm -hmm. But when she repeated it all back to me, I feel like she really felt more comfortable and was finally trying to learn it. And so she, you know, she got it all under control. Okay. Yeah, great. When she was able to repeat it back to you. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, is there anything that you wish you had done during this lesson that you uh, didn't do or anything you would change if you could try this lesson again? Um, I honestly, I completely forgot about letting them pair up. I even had it on my notes right here. But, uh, you know, since I did, even though I didn't do that, I, I think it still went pretty smooth and it went okay. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, great. So um, any final takeaways that you have from this practice you can apply to another lesson like this? Um, just being more prepared um, for the questions that they bring in. Like I, I should have um, thought about if they got confused on the obtuse angle, I should have thought about ways for them to remember it because I really did come up with that on the spot. Oh, um, so I, I feel like for uh, next time, I think I should be more prepared for more questions. Okay, great. Yeah, always uh, over prepare or make sure that you uh, you're prepared with a maybe a remembering device for all the angles. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much. This concludes your simulation for today. I really appreciate your time and reflection, and your video recording should be processed in about 24 hours, and you'll get a, an email with a link to that, so you can look that over with your professor. But um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Bye.